This is the recording for the Danzig Fulkerson Johnson model for TSP or DFJ model. Okay, so I've already set it up with the instance information. So maybe I'll go ahead and run those cells. Yeah, okay, so we know we have our random instance. Uh, and we're going to solve TSP to optimality for this instance using integer programming. Um, specifically, we'll, we'll use the Groby solver. So first we'll import Groby. And then from Groby, we'll import this GRB. Okay. So I'll run that cell. Assuming you have Groby installed and with a valid license, this should run. Okay, so our first step is we're going to we'll build this Groby model. And we'll add a variable for each edge. So these variables we'll call by X. And we're going to have a variable for each edge. And these will all be of type binary. Our objective be of type minimize to minimize cost of each edge multiplied by the decision to include that edge. So the decision to include an edge is x sub e. This over all. Uh, edges. And we'll multiply this by the length of that edge. Let me double check. Yeah, okay. So that's our objective is to minimize the length of the tour. Um, now let's write some constraints. So one key constraint is that each city should be, they should touch two edges from the tour. For degree constraints. And really what this is saying is that each city should be entered and each city should be left. So enter and leave each city. For this, we can write like this, we're adding multiple constraints. And each one of these constraints will say that something should equal two. True for all nodes I. And so what we're summing over here of those edge variables or edges that touch node i, which we can write like this. So we want to sum all of the xe's for e in g dot edges if e belongs to. Actually, I think we could write this as for all e in. Okay, let it go. We'll try to optimize that. Okay, it doesn't like something here. So maybe I need to do for all E and G dot edges. Okay, that fixed it. Okay, so you see it solves super quickly, 0.08 seconds. Um, let's see if this is actually something we like. Is this actually a solution? So the edges that are part of this tour are all E, E, and G dot edges. If that associated X variable is one, um, but again, because of floating point issues, this 
x variable could actually be taking a value of something like 0.9999999. And to Groby, Groby looks at that and says, oh yeah, that's that's one. But here, strictly speaking, if we try to check for equality, if we just said, is this actually equal to one? Um, it might return false or not count that edge when it should. So we just use this easy check and compare it to 0.5. And I can draw it. I will draw the edge induce subgraph induced by the tour edges. And I'll also position the nodes as before. <laughs> and we got lucky here. Um, actually, don't need any more constraints. <laughs> so those degree two constraints um satisfied or sufficed for this instance uh, but generally speaking we won't be so lucky so let me try i'll run all of these again we'll see if the next random instance that we get is as lucky okay quite a different story here so now we have multiple sub tours and so we need to cut off um, this particular X solution that, that this represents. So for each one of these subtours, uh, they have more edges in them than are permitted. So this subtour in the middle has three edges between those three nodes, uh, but in actuality, we can only have at most two of those edges in our tour. Component. So here we have one, two, three, four, five components. For each component in the set of connected components of that edge induced subgraph, we need to add a constraint, um, specifically if the number of vertices in that component is strictly less than the number of nodes in the graph. So that first case that we had, we actually had a tour. So that that uh, there was just a single component and it had all of the nodes. But uh, so in that case, there's no constraint that we should be adding. But for this particular case, these sub tours touch fewer than all of the nodes, and so we should add a constraint. Okay, so we'll be adding a constraint for this component. Maybe now let's just print it so you can see what we're going to add. So the components are identified by the nodes that belong to them. So one of these components has nodes 0, 18, and 14. So it's either this triangle or this triangle, I'm not sure. Okay. So in that component, Let's say between nodes 0, 8, and 14, there are three edges between them. So those edges that are kind of inside of that component, I'll call the inner edges. This is a set of all edges ij or ij in g dot edges, um, for which the endpoint i is in the components. And the endpoint J is in the components. I could print these edges too. Okay, so this first component with nodes 0, 18, 14 has edges 0, 14, 0, 18, and 14, 18. Meanwhile, let's pick another one. So this next component has four vertices in it. So I guess it must be this one. And the number of edges between these four vertices is actually six. So the, the solution here only picked four of them, but there are actually two other ones that are in our input graph. So one five, one seven, one eleven, five seven, five eleven, and seven eleven. So six in total, four are picked here. 
But still, among these four edges that are inside, are kind of between these four nodes, we can still only pick um, three of them in our solution. Okay, so what we would do here is add constraint, and we want to say the most edges we could pick from this component is how many vertices are in that component minus one. And if we were to have sum these x variables over these inner edges, you look like this. Something x e for e and inner edges. Okay. We can. I won't print the inner edges anymore. So we add our constraints, and now we optimize our model again with those five constraints added. And you'll see again, it solves very, very quickly, 0.02 seconds. So let's uh, let's draw that solution. So maybe I'll just copy paste this code from before. And that, um, and again, we're, we're unlucky. Um, we end up having this little sub tour and then a, a larger thing that's closer to a tour. So we again want to add these constraints. So what I could do is I could just copy this. Run that, add those constraints. Um, then we optimize. After I re-optimize, I'll get the solution and draw it again. So after I resolve, I actually luck out this next iteration and I get a, a TSP tour. Um, so in order to kind of avoid having to kind of copy paste code for each one of these iterations, what I could do is, is add a while loop here. So what I could say is, let's see. Maybe I'll, I'll show explicitly this first round of cuts in the first picture, but then after that, uh, maybe I'll, I'll create a while loop that'll just keep adding cuts as long as they're needed. So let's say while, um, basically while our solution graph is not connected, I'll keep adding cuts. So while not, it's, subgraph, so the, the solution of those two edges. So while our solution is not connected, I'll loop over all of the components. And I guess here I could remove this constraint for that if statement, because everything inside of here should be The fact that I that it's not connected means that each of these components should have strictly less than the number of nodes in them. Okay, um, then I after adding those cuts, I would optimize, and then I would draw. If I wanted to. Okay, so let me restart this from scratch because right now I think it's actually. The model has all of the constraints that are needed to prove optimality. So let me run this again. Okay, so in this particular case, um, it just needed one round of cuts and then it was connected. And so this last while loop wasn't even entered. Let me, if I try this again, maybe one or two more times, it'll show cases where it actually needs to be called. Okay. So we add some cuts, so we add some cuts, resolve, add some cuts. Um, and I guess the picture here doesn't look like a tour, but that's because it's drawing these graphs one on top of the other. So I need to the dot pi plot as PLT. And then each time I go to draw it, I'll just need to make sure that I'm getting a new figure. 
Okay, so let me restart and run all of this again. Okay, so this worked. So let's see. It solves the over the degree constraints. It gets some subtours. It adds some cuts. It reoptimizes. We still have some subtours, um, and then it adds one more round of cuts, and then it ends up being connected. Okay. So this is uh, this is an optimal solution at this point. 